All right, so I figured I'd give you an update on the peppers, and I'm going to be harvesting some of these peppers. I'll show you what the harvest looks like so far that I'm getting off of this. I got to do another harvest on the peppers on my deck. I'll show you that. Just give you a quick look at what's going on inside this section of the greenhouse. Just let you view what you got here while I try to give you some commentary. A lot of these peppers are ready. I can't just go, for me, this year, I can't just go and cut all the peppers off and stuff them in a big bin and... I have to, everything's got to be separated and labeled so I know what species I got. I got to go through the pepper species. Some of them aren't true to their species characteristics if there's some variants in it. I have to isolate those. And so it's, it's a little bit of work on my part. But I just want to give you a quick look at what's going on with the peppers. As you can see, some of these peppers got quite tall. They're almost five feet tall. They're producing quite well. So far in here, we haven't got any mold yet, thank God. We got some pretty healthy peppers. I've been eating peppers every day, guys, to the point where I'm actually sick of peppers. I've got peppers coming out of my eyeballs right now. And hot peppers, you could really only eat so many of hot peppers, guys. And you probably know the answer to why you could only eat so many. I just can't keep eating peppers. I mean, yeah, I know I grow a lot of them. I do put a lot out for sale this year. I'm not really putting much out for sale because... I have to tend the table, and when I do that, that takes away my time from everything else that I got going on, and I'm very busy with all this other stuff. I really can't tend the table this year. And sometimes I, when I do put a table out with vegetables and stuff on it, a lot of times I just put a, a cup in there, and I put like a camera on top, and you know, I put the instructions on how to pay for it, and usually you don't have a problem, but I have had a couple people just load up and go and no money and so I stopped doing that the honor system wasn't very honorable in some cases so I don't do that anymore that means I have to sit out and wait for people to come and there's not much to do while I'm sitting and waiting so that's why I'm not really enthusiastic about just setting up a table and putting my stuff out uh, sometimes you could sit there all day and not get any, or you might get two, one or two drive-bys, that's it. But other than that, hot peppers isn't the big hoo-ha around here. Not many people go crazy for hot peppers. I was hoping maybe to introduce some of these really hot peppers to some of the locals around here, but again, they're not real big fans of it. They like some stuff, they get a little creative, but they're not real that much into it, so it's hard for me to entice people to try them i'm not going to give all my peppers away you know i'm going to a lot of trouble growing them and things like that i can sell them online i'm not set up to sell them online i really don't want to waste my time because there's not a big turnout in it yeah some of the hot peppers you could get it you could fetch a good penny for those but outside of that all these other things nobody really nobody cares you know so that's why i'm not wasting my time with it i'm more concerned on the seeds than anything else so that's why you don't see me uh, really showing you my stand. If I set up a stand, see, normally the big thing that brings people in when you put out a stand is the tomatoes. Tomatoes and corn is big out here. They, they like it. It sells. And then you can put everything else around the table. Your peppers, your hot peppers, your turnips, your, your rutabagas, your 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 beets, all those root crops, people like that, but they're not just going to stop for that. They don't want to even pull over for it. They see like a whole table full of tomatoes and you're sitting out there, yeah, you get you get people stopped for that. This year was a disaster with tomatoes. I mean, not a total disaster, but it wasn't, you know. I've had wheelbarrows full of tomatoes bringing them up to the stand, selling tomatoes by the, by the, by the cardboard carton. That's how many tomatoes I had last year. I had 500 plants growing last year. I made some money doing that. It's not worth it for me to do it any other way. It's honestly, it's I'd rather just let them rot in the garden when I can't eat, or give it away to some neighbors and stuff. But outside of that, it's a lot of work, and you got to clean the tomatoes. You got to check the tomatoes for bugs and worms and disease. And I'm just, I just save my seeds and then whatever's. I used to have chickens. I was feeding them to my chickens too, but I don't have chickens anymore, so. I'm going to do a harvest and I'll show you the harvest at the end 
of towards the end of this video and you'll be able to see what I gathered and everything like that. Keep you up to date on what I'm actually getting off here. Some of the results of the fruits, what they look like, some of the sun damage. That, uh, some of the peppers really got damaged pretty bad because of the sun. What I didn't realize is that some of these, when the sun cooks them, it looks like a good pepper on the vine, but it's dead on a plant. It's dead. It looks good. You think, oh, I picked that and eat it. It's dead on a plant. And what happens when it dies like that and it sits on a plant and you don't know it, it this little fungus gets inside the pepper and it kind of starts getting that fuzz. It's basically garbage, but you don't know that when, when you're looking at it. You can't tell. I look for certain signs now to see if the peppers are dead or alive. And nine out of ten times, I'm right, it's dead because I know what I'm looking for now and I can see that it's just damaged from the sun. It, they're definitely heat damaged. Now, that's not something I normally or actually never experienced we don't experience temperatures for two or three months at a time in the 90s and up then the nights go down into the 60s so the temperature swing the variations between those temperature swings it, the mold and the, and the mildews are absolutely gone haywire this year worst i've ever seen it and we've been getting rain like you wouldn't believe i mean we're probably up to somewhere around four or five inches right now of rain this month we're in uh what middle of august so we're, we're basically up to five inches of rain. We may see 10 inches of rain. Look, look at my greenhouse floor. You see that? You know what this is? It's, it's so much rain coming down. Washing into washing mud and everything. We're talking like a river of water coming, pouring, because I'm, I'm on a mountain, so the water comes off the mountain, down on me. We're talking so much water, it's literally washing out my entire inside of my greenhouse okay that's how much rain we began i haven't i've lived here 10 years i haven't seen that once in a while it does that when we get like five inches of rain in the spring we get like a monsoon season and then it's dry for the rest of the year after that but this year i've never seen anything like this I've never seen 100 plus degree temperatures. And then in a greenhouse, it gets to like 120, 130 degrees in here. I'm surprised these plants are actually even still alive. Just shocked, actually. But yeah, I just figured I'd show you this quick. I'm going to show you my harvest at the end of this video. All right, so I'll see you on the next one. And check, watch this video to the end to see the uh, harvest, okay? I'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Okay, so a quick clip. And you can see, this is my first harvest from the greenhouse. I got some tomatoes, I just put them in the back. This is mainly about peppers. Okay, I'll just get in really close. Kind of scan you around. Everything is labeled. But I'm just going to give you this panoramic view. I don't know. Maybe I'll include an image of each variety of pepper. And at the end of this video, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. This took me almost all morning in 90 degree heat, guys. 90 degree heat. All right. Just want to give you a quick look over here. So if I do add the images in the end, you can go back and look and see if you can locate those peppers. All right. Now, this is my first harvest from the greenhouse. I'm probably going to get another one or two more harvests out of it. Yeah, cucumbers on the end. I didn't I didn't have nothing to do with them. I figured I'd throw it in for the photo because I'm probably going to cut a piece of this out and put it up on uh, either Reddit or I'm going to tumble it or something. All right. These are the Trinidad scorpions. Okay. Now, this is one harvest out of my greenhouse. I'm expecting two, three. I may even get four harvests in outside and if I bring the peppers in I'll probably get one more so I could get as many as five more harvests very similar to this size slowly tapering off in size and quantity of course all right so let me just scan you through my deck I'm getting ready to do another harvest on the deck as you can see they're all coming in up here I threw a lot of peppers away guys I threw a lot of peppers away I probably thrown away two five-gallon buckets of peppers because of this just to show you 
I these plants, these uh, bell pepper plants, these three-year bell pepper plants, produced more peppers this year than all the previous years combined. And I'm talking about as they produce peppers indoors. I cannot believe how many peppers came off this plant, these plants this year. There are so many peppers coming off these plants, I couldn't actually consume them all and or uh, get them off the vine before the black mold got them. And so once the black mold sets in, like I told you, you're going to end up with this type of problem. And once you get marks like that, I can't sell that in front of my house. I just can't sell that. So they're basically garbage. I used to feed them to the chickens. I just want to give you a quick view of what's ready. See, now some of these bells are very interesting in shape. All right, so you can see I probably got about 30 or 40 more bells just up here on my deck. I pulled off. I probably got, oh, I don't know. These are the bells I pulled off from the greenhouse. I probably got uh, another dozen bells in the greenhouse, and everything else is just habaneros. But you can see how many habaneros. This is my second batch of habaneros, okay? This is the greenhouse habaneros. I don't know. There's three or four plants. Okay, so that's my greenhouse habaneros. I got to do another habanero harvest up here on my deck. And you can see how many habaneros that I'm actually going to get. I'm probably going to get another pile like this. There's got to be 60 or 70 habaneros on here now. Maybe even 100. I don't know. I didn't count them. All right, so this is my first harvest. I figured I'd share it with you. I have some photos. Maybe I'll include it at the end of the video. And uh, I'll keep you updated when the third harvest, well, when the second harvest of the greenhouse comes in, I'll keep you up to date on that. And I'm not even showing you the harvests I'm getting out of my, my garden because it's just too much, guys. I can't even actually fit all the stuff I'm harvesting on this table because they're starting to blend in with each other. And it's going to be very difficult for me to separate because I'm going to take seeds out of all this stuff. All right, so I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>